the last two of Leah's sons were named Yesachar and Zavulun. The reasons given, Leah said, now that I have six sons, I will become the main home for my husband, for Yaakov. A home, a permanent home, is called Zvul. And so she named her son Zvulun because now the home is going to be in her tent more than in Rachel's tent. To understand what does it mean that with the birth of Zavulun, Leah's tent became the proper main permanent home because Zavul, base Zavul, is more than just a dwelling place, it implies permanence. So, what is it about Zavulun that makes that Yaakov's main dwelling place? It's interesting that Zvulun and Yisachar were partners. Zvulun was a businessman in the shipping business, and Yisachar was a scholar. The tribes, the tribe of Yisachar spent their time learning, the tribe of Zvulun spent their time making money and supporting the scholars of Yisachar. So the question is, how is it that Yaakov, whose main objective, main devotion was Torah, study, he sat in yeshiva and studied, how is it that because Zevulun, the businessman, was born to Leah, that that would become Yaakov's main dwelling place? You would think the dwelling place should be a place of Torah, not a place of business for Yaakov. The explanation briefly is, there are two objectives, there are two goals. One is to study Torah infinitely. The other is to make the world, the lowest of all worlds, into a dwelling place for God. So although it's true that the study of Torah for itself, for its own sake, is an endless, infinite endeavor. But there's also another important aspect to the service of God, and that is making the lower world into a dwelling place for him. Where does the dwelling place happen? In the lowest part of the lowest world, which means in the physical, ordinary, human, natural activities that a businessman engages in. So that the curse, so to speak, that was given to Adam after they ate from the tree, by the sweat of your brow you will eat bread, meaning you will have to work hard to make a living rather than just have everything grow on trees, is really a blessing because through that, we are able to make the lowest part of the lowest world into a dwelling place for God. Whereas people who study Torah don't have that kind of an effect because Torah is not the lowest part of the lowest world. So Yaakov's main dwelling place became the tent of Leah when Zavulun, the businessman, did his job his service of God, making the lower world into a godlier place. So it's more than just Zavulun supported the study of Torah, so he gets credit for the Torah. But then it would have been better for Yaakov to make his, his main dwelling place in the tents of those who study Torah. More like Yisachar than Zavulun. And yet Zavulun has the name of permanence, permanent home. But now the question is another thing. 
Making a dwelling place for God in the lowest part of the lowest world is not infinite or permanent. It's not eternal. The result is eternal. But the process is not, because once Mashiach comes and the world has become godly, then there will be no need to engage in these activities anymore. And all our efforts will be in the study of Torah, not in the elevation of the world. So you would think that a permanent home, again, should be in a place of Torah because that's going to be permanent. We will always study Torah and not in a place which by its very nature is temporary because once you finish the job, it's done and there's nothing more to elevate. Once Mashiach comes, our growth will be within goodness itself. Everything will be good, but there's good and there's better. But there won't be the need to elevate that which is low, because nothing will be low. So again, the question is, why would Yaakov make his main dwelling place in the lowest world, which is temporary, when a dwelling place is supposed to be permanent? So it would make more sense to make his dwelling place in the halls and the studies of Torah, which is eternal, permanent. In fact, the study of Torah will only get better and deeper with time. So we have to understand a little bit, what is this idea of a dwelling place for God in the lower world? One of the things that happens when we devote ourselves to elevating the lowest part of the lowest world is that it reveals the true connection, the deep connection that we actually have with God. It's like the difference between a tzaddik and a bal tshuva, someone who has sinned and repented. The tzaddik does not sin, but we can't really guarantee what's going to happen if he is put into a position where the temptation is great, where the cards are stacked against him, where all the pressure is towards sinning, we don't know what's going to happen with him because he has never experienced sin and so he may not know how to handle it. Like children who can get easily distracted into sin because they don't know what it is. For them, it's, it's an adventure, a new experience. Whereas somebody who has already sinned has seen the world for what it is and rejects it. No temptation is going to shake, shake him. No temptation is going to break down his, his resolve because he's been there, he's seen that, and he has found it empty. So in terms of permanence, there seems to be a greater permanence in a person who has sinned and has returned than the person who has never sinned. So what has improved? The devotion to God that was there all along, but until it was tested, until it was activated, it was hidden and unknown. So what happens when we go to work, we go to business, we engage in, in worldly affairs and mundane affairs? Actually, what it does is reveal the true connection that we have with God. So going to work and engaging in business does not bring you closer to God. It reveals the closeness that you already have, but have never experienced, revealed. Which explains also how Yaakov built his family and established who he was and what he was in the house of Lavan, where he had to be a shepherd and he had to do his job honestly, with devotion, with commitment, with integrity. He couldn't neglect 
his responsibilities as a shepherd day or night. And yet that's where he established himself, and himself is Torah. Himself is also his family. That's where his family was created and born, in a place of unholiness while he was engaged in worldly activity. And that made him stronger and closer to God than the years that he spent sitting in, in, in the yeshiva studying the Torah. So what we're now saying is making the mundane world holy is a, has a permanent eternal effect because although we're not going to be doing that after Mashiach comes, but the result of it is that it reveals the true uh, eternity in our relationship to God. In other words, when you struggle with the world, it brings out the true devotion that you have to God. And that is why people who study, who work for a living, which is the vast majority of people, even of the Jewish people who have a mitzvah to study Torah day and night, but the fact is the vast majority of Jews have to work for a living have to engage in the mundane aspects of the world. And that is to bring out the unbreakable bond that exists between us and God. So every, every businessman, every person engaged in labor is told that he must in his free time study Torah and, and pray, daven like on Shabbos or the free hours of the weekdays. And we get the impression that that study is kind of uh, meager, barely significant. Here the Rebbe is saying the study of the businessmen when they do study is in some way deeper and greater than those who study all the time. Because the struggle with the physical world, with the mundane world, activates a deeper part of your soul. So that when you study, you're studying with a deeper appreciation and a deeper hunger for that connection and for that knowledge. So until Mashiach comes, we have this opportunity to use the fact that we're living in a physical world, in the lowest part of the physical world, we have to engage in mundane activities, and you have to do it honestly, with integrity. You can't do it absent-mindedly or, or uh, indifferently. You have to be responsible to your employer or to the, uh, to the task at hand. You've got to really pay attention with devotion. And why should that be? Because as long as the world needs to be elevated, that's our mission. But we have to appreciate the fact that the purpose of that, why do we struggle with the world, with its, with its ugliness and with its lack of godliness? Not so that the world would become God's main dwelling place, or Yaakov's main dwelling place, but that we would become God's primary dwelling place. Because by working with the physical, the essence of who we are is revealed. And what exactly is a dwelling place in the lowest of the low? A dwelling place means a place where you can live in an intimate relationship with someone else. It's not a dwelling place if you're living alone. It's just a roof over your head. A dwelling place, particularly a permanent dwelling place, eternal, means two people sharing a dwelling place. 
then that place is a true dwelling. It's a home more than a house. So where really does God want to be? Oh, he wants to be in the lowest world. No, he wants to be in us. His connection is to us. His connection is to his Torah. But by elevating the lowest part of the lowest world, we make it so that this connection that we have with God has no distractions. See, a dwelling place is where a couple can feel completely comfortable and at home because the, the place is tailored to their needs. Not too much, not too little. So why do we need to elevate this world? Why do we need a venue of godliness? Because the relationship needs a place and a place has to be conducive to the relationship. A house that is cluttered, a house that is too small to accommodate the couple will cramp the relationship. A house that is too vast, too big, and you get lost in it will, will somehow diminish or damage the relationship. So the place of a relationship is significant. And for the relationship to, to be all it can be, you have to have a place that suits the couple. So God says, make this lowest world into a place that suits me. And then we together can have a home in the lowest world. Why in the lowest world? Why does that suit God? Because if in the lowest world there is recognizable godliness, then there will never be another distraction. As long as the lowest world exists and remains low, it can always serve as a distraction. So when we say a place where God can be comfortable, it means a place that serves God's purpose, so he's comfortable, but it's permanently that way, it will never deteriorate into something less. And that's why once Mashiach comes, there is no possibility of slipping back, of backsliding into exile again, because there will be no negativity in the world to distract us from our relationship. And then we will be truly one. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program. There's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation.